Hello, uh, my name is Shane Hegarty and I am the author of a few books, well kind of two series really, the Darkmouth books, there's the first one there and then you can see them on the shelves because I'm here in my office, here's my TARDIS uh, and you can see books and you can see them in different languages down there, there's German down there, and Bulgarian and Italian and all sorts there and I also, uh, they're about monster hunter, legend hunters um, and I'm going to tell you a bit about those in a second and then kind of that's what the whole point of this is going to be in a way um, and I also write the boot books which are about this robot who wakes up in a grinder with only two and a half memories set out to find its owner and I'm making this video as part of a couple of different videos three videos actually that I'm doing for Cork libraries and uh, it's because I can't get to Cork Libraries this year for obvious reasons. Unfortunately, we are trapped in Dublin, uh, where they have uh, not just built a wall, but dug a moat around it and put sharks in it. So we're not allowed leave and especially not go allowed go to Cork. Um, and I really miss that because I absolutely love going to Cork every year. But instead, I'm kind of making a series of videos for Cork Libraries about how you can write your own stories and you'll see another video uh, on this channel about how to write a robot character based on this and I'm also uh, I'll also have a video on the channel about how to uh, how stories have kind of a beginning a model and an end that'll make sense when you watch it and this one is about something else it's about uh, setting the story somewhere and actually using all the things that you have all around you and uh, I'm kind of using the boot book a little bit, but actually mainly it's going to be the Darkmouth book. And I'm opening up a page here on Darkmouth to show you the map of Darkmouth. And this is where Finn, who's a legend hunter, by the way, I didn't do that drawing. James Delarue, great illustrator, did it. And uh, Finn is a legend hunter who has to fight monsters of myth that keep invading his town. And he doesn't want to have to do it. And to be honest, I stole my town and used them in the books. And the reason I'm using my phone here, and it's a bit shaky, is because I thought, instead of sitting here and telling you about how you can find inspiration in the settings of your town and where you live, or maybe what's in your classroom and all of that, because all that stuff is all around you all the time. Uh, instead, what I do is I'm quite hungry now because it's lunchtime. So I'm going to take a walk home from my office where I live and I am going to walk up the road and I'm going to show off a couple of the things, a few of the things that I used in the Darkmouth stories that gave me inspiration to show you how you might get inspiration as well. So as I'm doing that, feel free to pause it at any time if you're in a classroom or if you're uh, looking at it at home or whatever. And have a look around and maybe see those things that you think in your room, on your street, uh, in the in the class, in your school, wherever it might be that you think could be useful for stories. And ask yourself some simple questions. What would happen if, what if a monster invaded your school? What if aliens uh, hovered over your house? What would you use in there to fight them off? What kind of exciting uh, adventures could you have using the setting that you have? And I will, on my little tour now, show you a few of those things that I've done. So it's quite sunny outside. I have my sunglasses. I'm going to go outside with my shaky camera and show you a few of the things uh, from around my town. Now, the first place that we meet Finn who is the legend hunter in the Darkmouth books and who really doesn't want to be a legend hunter fighting a minotaur is in the back lanes of Darkmouth which is the town uh, not just the name of the book but also the town and these are the lanes that I grew up in running around so right now my office is just over there where I write my books just up there and this here believe it or not is actually the house that I grew up in or the back of the house and these are the laneways that I used to run around as a kid and I wonder if I can there we go you can see somebody's kind of our sail sign there's some drilling or something going on as well so I'm not quite sure if you'd be able to hear that but these are the laneways 
that I grew up in that wasn't there. That was, a, that was an old hotel when I was growing up. And myself and my friends used to run around here. And when I came to writing the Darkmouth books, I wanted to have a maze of a town that would make it very difficult for these m monsters of myth that pop in from other worlds to cause havoc. I thought, well, it'd be a bit of a maze of a town with high walls and maybe there'd be glass on these walls, broken glass and barbed wire and things like that. And kind of a tough, foreboding place that was well used to these monsters coming in and is always trying to stop them. And I, that's where these laneways that I grew up in, they really inspired me from the very beginning and the very, very, very beginning of those Darkman stories. They were a big, big deal. So, there you go. Have a look around your town, your streets. Try and think if there's anywhere that would really suit a kind of, if you're writing a spooky story, maybe a spooky story kind of setting. Uh, look, as you can see with these old houses and things, that there's lots of sort of, you could imagine not just monsters, but maybe ghosts here, zombies, who knows what else could be running around and lurking in these streets. So you can see over there, you can see the, that's the bookshop. And in one of the Darkmouth books, I don't want to get, give away too much, but a giant creature escapes. And I used kind of lots of stuff that's on this street as part of the chase. And I thought of the bookshop, and what it would be like if a big chunk was taken out of the bookshop, the poor old bookshop. But I only wanted to make sure it got in because the bookshop is such an important part of my life. And I wanted to make sure it was part of the story. But uh, I also thought to myself, what would happen if something kind of mad happened to that bookshop? What kind of mess would be made? Now, I grew up really running along this beach in Skerries, where I live, where I grew up and where I still live. And sometimes you can kind of spend years and years and years and years looking at the same thing without sort of really thinking twice about it. But when I started thinking of my stories, I again realized that there are all sorts of things kind of everywhere. And one of them, especially if you're by the sea or near water, which I know you guys in Cork are, you have sort of strange things. I'm just zooming in. I don't know if you can see there's somebody actually swimming all the way out there. But you have these islands off Skerries. And I thought, well, what's going on with those islands? Are they, could they have monsters on them? Could there be something lurking under the sea? Could there be secrets on them? You can see the way over there. If I zoom in again a bit, you can see the Martello Tower. You could imagine something kind of strange happening over there. Maybe they're not islands at all. Maybe they're kind of the frozen backs of monsters that have been waiting to come back to life. And like that, when I look out to the sea, I think of all the things that could be out there that are lurking and what could happen and what might come out of there. So have a look at the things that you sort of just are always there and you sort of imagine will always be there, like the river and the sea and the hills and the mountains, and then sort of think, well, what would happen if, what if, what if, what if, what if one of them was a monster? What if you found a monster in it? What if the only thing between you and the monster was the river? just find all that inspiration from all those things around you that are that you're walking past every single day. When I was writing Boot, I wanted somewhere for the robots, the broken robots in Boot to live. And I thought, where could they go? And where would be kind of a fun place to live? And then I realized that I spent my childhood running around this place here, which is unfortunately closed today, but which is an old amusement arcade. And you can see where they still have a few of the kind of amusement rides, which normally would be open around this time of year. But unfortunately, with everything going on in COVID and all of that, they can't be open for the moment. But I had kind of great fun putting loads of these things in and then imagining what it would be like to be 
living in one of these and spending your day just kind of playing on them and having fun or uh, what happens when they get completely out of control and again it's kind of the color and the fun of it and you forget when you're writing your stories that you don't always have to think of amazing kind of brand new places that have never been seen before sometimes those places are right on your doorstep where am I now? I'm back out at the beach on the other side, but you can see the harbour there. It's a bit windy. You can see Google here. It's a bit windy. But that harbour as well. Right. Now why am I showing you the harbour? Because again, can you imagine? I suppose there's lots of things you can kind of imagine in the story, but sometimes they're sort of funny things that you don't really think about. And one of them is like there's an ice cream shop on that harbour. A little small place called Storm in a Teacup. And I thought, you know those big giant plastic cones that you get outside ice cream shops? I looked at it and thought, well, what happens if you could pull on the big flake on the ice cream cone and maybe it would reveal stuff underneath the ice cream shop and maybe tunnels that in the dark myth books go all through the town and underneath and you can explore them. So have a look at those little strange things that might be outside shops or inside shops or anywhere and just imagine well, what happens if you press that button what happens if you pull down on that thing maybe something weird can happen here are more sort of back streets of the town and the reason i'm showing you this is because in one of the darkness books look at that lovely you see, when you see these really old cottages, you can imagine a historical story there, can't you? Maybe set something in the past. And then, what if there's caravans there? Maybe somebody coming on holidays. It's an idea for a story. And people do that. They come down, they spend their summers here. But here's the thing I wanted to show you. I have these derelict buildings up here. And they appear in one of the Darkmouth books. And they've been sort of empty for years and years and years. And you could easily imagine some kind of secret den or something happening in there. Or some sort of strange device being hidden in there. Or anything weird happening. Alright, uh, what's the last thing I want to show you? Not the sea this time. But this. The stony beach. And you can see how stony that beach is. Shadow is up. Uh, very stony, stony, stony. And when I was writing the dark of books, I wanted there. I really wanted to get the idea that the, even on a kind of a nice sort of seaside town on the surface, it was like a stony beach gave it a hard edge. And it's just a small detail. But it's kind of an important one because it says a lot about Dartmouth and how it is and how it's a sort of a hard, stony place. Does that make sense? And then I love that sound. Do you hear that? Let's see if we can turn it around again. That sound of the sea on the stones. I'm not sure if you can put it. Little things like that then give you a kind of description to have. So, this is what this little tour and this walk around Skerries has been all about because it's not just a little tour of my town. It's a tour, I suppose, in a way of the places that I got my imagination from or I got my ideas from and the places that stoked my imagination and really got them going. And if I'm stuck in an idea, I know I can have a look around, see what is there and what can inspire me. And not just that, but I can actually kind of stand in a place and look at it and a man try and get the description of it. Try and sort of find the things that I can use in my books to describe it. Um, or what it sounds like, what it smells like, what it feels like. And then sometimes imagine, well, what if? What if this town that I'm in here now had actually been invaded by monsters for a thousand years. What, what would it be like? Would it be very different? How would people be? Would they be scared? Would they be excited? Would they be bored? And I know that this town isn't special in any way. Uh, 
when it comes to coming up with ideas because everywhere you live and everywhere you go around and I know having spent so much time especially in Cork I know that there are brilliant 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 places everywhere and great ideas for stories everywhere you go and great settings for stories everywhere you go so you're never stuck sometimes people say do you get writer's block and you know sometimes it could be hard to come up with an idea and make the idea work but there's always great stuff all around you that you can use as inspiration so if I'm ever stuck just go for a walk and see what's around me and get the inspiration from the sights and sounds and smells I did bring you up to the harbour where it can sometimes really stink uh, of like kind of dead fish and things like that but you can get so much and I realise actually I'm going to show you the harbour from here that there's a bit in Dartmouth where Finn ends up in the water off the end of that harbour and that was the harbour that I had in my head so so many things all around so have a walk around if you're in a classroom now if you're in the school and it's okay sorry um, have a walk around have a look around see about all the things that are there talk about where you live talk about what you have around you and the sports clubs that are around you the history that might be around you uh, the old buildings the derelict buildings the new buildings the types of shops that you might have. What could you do if a zombie went into a bicycle shop? I don't know. You could have fun finding out. So, have fun. And they are my big number one rule anytime I'm writing is have fun. But have fun and find that inspiration from all around you. And I'm sure someday uh, you'll, you'll have loads of great stories that you can share and put into the brilliant Cork libraries with all the other great stories. Bye!